What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. Moving on to another question. We've done a question like this before, another swimming pool type of question, but it's pretty common and it may come up on your test. So let's do another one. So Jane is swimming laps in a pool 60 meters long. She swims from one end to the other at a constant rate in 45 seconds. She rests for 10 seconds and then takes 50 seconds to swim another lap at a constant rate. She rests for five seconds and swims her last lap in 30 seconds at an increasing speed. Part A, draw a distance versus time graph. Part B, calculate the average speed during her last lap. So part A, drawing a distance versus time graph. I drew up a, the uh, preliminary axis just to save time. So the distance on the y-axis, I made it go up by 30 meters. And then the time in seconds on the x-axis, I made that go up by 10 seconds. So that's the scales that I'm using. So let's draw this distance versus time graph. So let's read it again. Jane is swimming laps in a 60 meter pool. She swims from one end to the other at a constant rate in 45 seconds. So in 45 seconds, which is here, she swims a distance of 60 meters. That's how long the pool is. So at zero seconds, she hasn't swam any distance. So we're starting here and she's swimming at a constant rate. Hence, this is just going to be a straight line, right? Because it's a distance versus time graph. If you remember from the overview video on distance versus time graphs, if you're going at a constant speed, then it's just going to be a straight line. Okay, then what happens? So then she rests for 10 seconds. So she rests from the 45 second mark to the 55 second mark. Uh, and since she's resting, she isn't moving. So how to represent an object not moving on a distance first time graph is just a horizontal line. And that has to go to the 55 second mark. So somewhere about there. So that there represents her 10 seconds in which she is resting. And then what happens? Then she takes 50 seconds to swim another lap at a constant rate. So 50 seconds from the 55 second mark, that would take us to the 105 second mark. Right, 55 plus 50 is 105, which is right there. And she swims another 60 meters because she swims another full lap. So, so far she's covered a distance of 60 meters. Well, another 60 meters on top of that means she's gonna cover a total distance of 120 meters. And she covers a distance of 120 meters at that 105 second mark. So somewhere around there. And again, this is a constant right so this is just going to be another straight line like that now notice that at least it should look like it that this line is a little less steep than this line here or at least it should be if this was drawn fully perfectly to scale because notice how she takes longer to complete this lap she takes 50 seconds the other one she took 45 seconds Right, so she's going at a slower speed, a slower constant speed, meaning that this line should be less steep than this one. So we're now at the 105 second mark, and what happens then? She rests for five seconds, so from 105 seconds to 110 seconds, she's resting, meaning she's not moving, meaning that it's just a horizontal line for a distance first time graph. The distance is not changing. And she swims her last lap in 30 seconds at an increasing speed. Okay, so we're at the 110 second mark. So she swims her last lap in 30 seconds. So 110 plus 30 would take us to 140. And since she's swimming another 60 meter length, the total distance would be 120 plus 60, which would be 180. So at the 140 second mark, she has swam a total distance of 180 meters. Now with this lap here, it says that she is increasing her speed. So she is accelerating. And since she's increasing her speed, 
if you remember, the way that looks like, it's just a curve like that. So notice how these ones are at constant speed, so it's just a straight line, but when you're increasing your speed, it's going to look like this. It's going to be a curve like that. And basically, if you draw or you find the speed at specific points on this interval, notice how the slope is going to get steeper and steeper. Hence, the speed is increasing, as we mentioned in the distance versus time overview video in the lectures. You may want to review that if you're a little confused about how I am drawing this here. We go through it in a lot more detail. So first lap, constant speed, second lap, constant speed, and then her last lap is an increasing speed. And it takes us a total distance, 180 meters at the 140 second mark. So that's it. That is the distance versus time graph for Jane. And notice that this is not the displacement from the starting position time graph, because then it would look more like um, it would look more like hills. So she would go up, and then she'd come back, and then she'd go out again. So that's a different type of graph. We actually went over the difference between those in an example in the lecture video. So you may want to review that. It was a swimming pool example as well. But because this is just a distance versus time graph, the graph is always going to be increasing for the most part because she's always, whenever she swims, she's covering extra distance. She swam three lengths. Each length is 60 meters meaning she covered a total distance of 180 meters, and that happened in 140 seconds. So anyway, that is the distance versus time graph right there. So part A is complete. And then part B, let's actually do up here in this space, and let's use the graph that we have. They ask you to find the average speed over her last lap. Well, her last lap starts right here. So it's starting at the 110 second mark, and it's finishing at the 140 second mark. So this coordinate here is 110, and at what distance is she there? She's at 120, and then this coordinate here is 140 seconds, and the distance is 180. So now that we have those coordinates, what we can do is we can find the average rate of change. So we have to find the difference between the y values. So the average rate of change is going to be 180 meters minus 120 meters, which makes sense. She swims a total of 60 meters. That's the difference between those two in her last length. And it takes her, what, 140 seconds minus 110 seconds. So it's 60 meters over 30 seconds, which is 2 meters per second. That's her average rate of change over her last lap. Now, you could have just read the question, and it says she swims her last lap in 30 seconds. You know a lap is 60 meters, so 60 meters distance over time would give us 2 meters per second. But... I use the graph in this case, so it's a little bit more proper. I did it a little bit longer because I used the actual coordinates. But either way, whichever way you use, you end up getting 2 meters per second for that average speed over her last lap.